building on our understanding of early detection, we're now going to talk with Emily Muzzy, who is an occupational therapist and early intervention specialist in Chicago, Illinois. Emily, we're so excited to learn from you. Can you start by telling us a bit about your background and experience? Sure, I'm professionally trained as an occupational therapist and I became a credentialed EI provider back in 1999. Currently, I see EI clients privately in the city of Chicago and also through an outpatient rehab clinic called Easter Seals DuPage in Fox Valley. I know from my practice that child-focused clinicians have a general understanding of early intervention, but would like to know more about the history, background, and processes that families go through to receive these services. Can you tell us a bit more about early intervention? Of course. I am really excited that child-focused clinicians want to know more about EI services, and I think it's really critical that we all work together to make sure that children receive the services that they need. Early Intervention is a federally funded grant program, and it assists states in providing comprehensive services and support for children who are showing some amount of delay, birth up through two years. Children must show some level of delay in different areas, including motor, sensory, feeding, speech, etc. A child has to be found eligible in order to participate in their state's program, and this eligibility fluctuates between states. A child can be automatically eligible by having a certain diagnosis or meeting certain risk factor criteria, or the child has to meet a, a specific level of delay in order to qualify. This level of delay can fluctuate between states. Here in Illinois, that level is 30%. But other states do have a higher threshold, and it can be as high as 50%, and some states do have a lower threshold. But I do want to emphasize that just because a child is not found eligible for the state's EI program, it doesn't mean that they don't need therapy services. Okay, so can you tell us a bit more about the evaluation process that children and families go through to receive services? Yeah, well, each state has its own system point of entry. Here in Illinois, that's known as Child as Family Connections, and that's where the families contact uh, once that referral is made. When the family reaches out, they are assigned a service coordinator, and that coordinator will complete an intake process with the family and set up the necessary evaluations. I should note that all the states have their own um, process for who is participating in that initial evaluation. Here in Illinois, a developmental therapist will be present, and then it could be an occupational therapist, a physical therapist, a speech-language pathologist, really depending on what that child's concerns are. That evaluation team will then go out and meet with a family, evaluate the child, and discuss their recommendations. At that time, they'll determine if the child is found to be eligible to participate in the EI program. If the child is found eligible, then that team is going to write up an Individualized Family Service Plan, or an IFSP, that will then be good for one year from that date. And this plan is family-focused, it contains goals for the child, and recommendations for frequency of services. From there, that child service coordinator will work to set up the ongoing therapy services recommended for that child. That's very helpful. So do you have any tips for child-focused clinicians regarding the EI referral and evaluation process? Yeah, so some families are unsure of why they are referred to the EI system, and it helps if their clinician really clearly explains what areas of development they have concerns with. This will really help the family to understand why they're referred to the system, and it will help them to advocate for their child during this evaluation process. Physicians should also provide a written document that explains what their concerns are, and the families can share this with the evaluation team, so that team really understands why the referral was made. Physicians should also follow up with the family during this referral process to see if the family has questions. It can be confusing sometimes for families. And, you know, if the family is not found to be eligible for services, then that physician may need to make a referral elsewhere. And also the physician should feel free to follow up with the child service coordinator at any point in time if there's questions regarding that child's evaluation or the therapy services that were recommended. That's good to know. So Emily, sometimes patients are referred to EI, but they are not found to be eligible for services. What should clinicians do if a patient does not qualify for EI, but if we still have developmental concerns? Well, this is a really important point because sometimes children don't qualify for the state-funded program, but they could still really benefit from therapy services. So in these cases, physicians have a couple of options to them. 
they can make a referral to another outpatient rehab facility or hospital-based therapy program for that child to get evaluated there. And in these cases, the physicians do need to provide the family with a prescription. Some developmental clinics, pediatric clinics, also do free developmental screenings for families. So it may be appropriate for the physician to refer the family there as well. If the family decides they don't want to do therapy services at that time, the clinician may then refer the family in a couple months back to EI if they do find that the family is still concerned. I think a lot of families don't know that this is even a possibility and they don't know that they can even ask for this. But a few months down the road, it could be that that child's gap in their development has even increased and at that time they could be found eligible for services. That's good to know. So what are some of the obstacles that can affect children's ability to receive early intervention services? Well, from the time of that initial point of uh, referral, it can take up to 45 days to then have that whole evaluation completed. And then there can be an, another wait time for that family to receive therapy services for their child. And unfortunately, some areas of the state, particularly in rural areas, can have really long wait times for service providers. And these families can be left feeling a little bit anxious as to what they can do to help their child while they are waiting for this process to be complete and to get the therapy services that their child needs. In these cases, physicians may want to make referral to other online resources, such as pathways.org. This is a resource where families can um, find certain developmentally appropriate activities at various ages that they can incorporate with their child while they're waiting for their child to get therapy services. Also, physicians should know that state funding can impact EI services. And during these times, advocacy from physicians could help to improve this. Absolutely. So to summarize, what do you feel are the most important things that you would like child-focused clinicians to know about early intervention? Well, EI is a state-funded program that is a resource for families to use. Um, it does not take a lot of work on the family's end in order to do the evaluation process. The evaluators will come to that family's home, they will evaluate the child there, and the service is free of charge for families. So really, if there are any concerns regarding this child's development, it makes sense to make the referral. And also, make that referral early, as soon as there are concerns, because if that child is showing delays, we want the child to be getting those services as soon as possible. It's really important to note that just because a child does not meet the eligibility criteria to participate in the state's EI program, it doesn't mean that that child doesn't need therapy services. For example, a child could have a 25% delay in the area of motor, but a 30% delay is required by that state. In these cases, the child could very well benefit from therapy services elsewhere. A clinician may then want to make a referral to another outpatient rehab facility for that child to be evaluated and potentially receive services there. It's also really important for the clinician to clearly communicate what their concerns are with the family. Provide your after-visit summary that details what those concerns are with the child's development. This will help the family understand the process better and be an advocate for their child and really communicate what their concerns are with the evaluation team. And finally, the field is evolving so much and providers across the board are recognizing the need to intervene early in infants who are showing developmental delays. We want to take advantage of baby's neuroplasticity and studies have shown that therapy does work at this young age. A child's entire developmental path can be positively impacted by receiving therapy services early on in life. So truly, early referral is the key. Emily, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. We really, really appreciate having you here and having an inside look at the early intervention program. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Nina, for having me.